I will bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are watching this live broadcast. I am just here because we are here to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I can't do nothing but bless his holy name. Well, you all, I am Pastor D, and I don't know if you recognize who I am or have ever seen me before, but I am the co-owner and founder, shall I say, of Dunamis Woman Enterprise, LLC, and I am here because it's all about the kingdom. It's all about what God is building for his kingdom, and I'm so grateful that he has chosen me as one of his generals uh, to be able to build his kingdom, produce the miracles, manifest the miracles, allow people to see the miraculous power of God, but most of all, understand it. Because we in the day and the hour that if we don't have miracles, we don't have nothing. So I don't know if you've recognized or familiar what dunamis means, but I'm just going to tell you before I go into some of the kingdom teachings, because dunamis is a Greek term and it means power. It means a miracle itself, literally. And that miracle itself only can come forth because of the power of God that's on the inside of you, the ability that he's placed inside of you, the strength that you have to be able to produce what he has given you to produce and it's already inside of you. So, so many people are looking for God to do something for them when he says, I put it in you. I put that dream in you. I put that idea in you. I put that thought in you. I put everything you need in you. So just as though as a woman, I have an egg inside of me that if a sperm meet my egg. I don't have to go outside to get the egg. The egg is on the inside of me. But when it meets something else that somebody else has, particularly a man and a sperm, it produces life. So, so it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. So I want to welcome you to this broadcast where we're going to hear, learn more about the kingdom. Because I can't learn the kingdom if I don't understand his power. And if I don't understand that dunamis power, then I won't understand the kingdom. And this is why even Jesus had taught the disciples in Matthew 6 when they made a choice to follow him and he said pray in this manner and as you all know how it goes in the end he gave them a way to be able to think so they could know how to pray but he also concluded he said for thine is the kingdom thine is the power that's that dunamis and thine is the glory so in other words all of it belongs to him and it's just not for this time he said it's forever and ever and ever and ever so i want you all to text someone Comment below, call someone and tell them, come in for this kingdom teaching. Because if you're watching this, that means you are part of his kingdom. And that means he has something for you and he has already put it inside of you. And yet he wants to produce it through you. So people may say, man, how did that happen? Well, it wasn't nothing but the miraculous power of God. They said, who is this man from Galilee? Wasn't supposed to come from that place. Wasn't supposed to come from that region. They had no idea. But in your state, there's power. And that power resides on the inside of you. So I want you to put in the comment. I want you to just put in your paper. I want you to get your Bible. And I want you to say it's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. And the kingdom is about how you think and how you was given a mind to be able to make decisions and produce in a state of royalty. Put that there, royalty. Royalty. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. We are a chosen people. I am a peculiar person. I'm not the average bear. I'm not the average woman. I am a dunamis woman. So before we go any further, let me have a word of prayer so we can set the atmosphere. Not only the atmosphere where I am, but the atmosphere where you are. Because not only is he omnipotent and omniscient, but he is omnipresent. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you for this moment. Father, we thank you because it's your word that give us life, God. And Father God, without your word, we are nothing, God. So I thank you for your rhema word. I thank you for your word that speaks life. I thank you for your word that has a certain topic that brings life to us right now in the name of Jesus. I thank 
thank you that you became the living word. The word became flesh. And Father, you walked it out of the earth so you could be touched with our feelings and the infirmities that we may experience. But you also not only bled, died, and suffered, but you rose again that we may have your resurrection power. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, in your ears, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. And I pray right now, Father, that every atmosphere is, is sanctified right now, no matter where he or she is watching this kingdom broadcast. Sanctify the atmosphere. Go before every place that's in their home and their hearts, God, and begin to clean it out so your word can permeate the heart, permeate the ears, because while man is looking at the outward appearance, you are steadily searching the heart. And the word of God comes as a two-edged sword to search the very intent of the heart. So we glorify you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Take out your pen and your paper, you all, uh, because this is our kingdom teaching here at Dunamis Woman. And it's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. That's all. His kingdom reigns. His kingdom rule. I know that that term is um, spoken a whole lot. But at the end of the day, we need to see some manifestation. We need to see some manifestation of his miraculous power because the enemy wants to kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness wants to come up against constantly the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. But here we are as his executors, executives. Here we are as his co-laborers. Here we are in Christ to say, not on my watch. All right. So the title that I'm going to be bringing to you uh, probably for the next two or three series, because I think it's something that we all need to understand how the enemy operates. There is no kingdom without an opponent and there's no opponent that there is an opponent that wants to come up against his kingdom and so i am one to say god you had a purpose for making man and woman man and woman he didn't say let us make pastors he didn't say let us make bishops he didn't say let us make apostles now i'm not here to dismiss the title the gift that has been bestowed upon your life. But at the end of the day, whatever you role you operate in and wherever you function and however your gift function, first of all, you are man or woe man. There is no in between. So I'm standing before you as woe man, okay? I'm standing before you because God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness in Genesis 1, 26, 27. He said, and I call them male and female. So here I am as female, uh, have developed into not only being a woman, but I have developed spiritually to understand who I am as the woman, which fortifies my mind to be, be the dunamis woman that called me to be. And so I do understand that the kingdom has now assigned me and positioned me to not only teach his word, but to subdue and dissolve the works of the enemy. So I want you to think of yourself as watching this. Are you woman or man? OK, don't look at, oh, I'm a mother, I'm an auntie, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher. Those those roles, those responsibilities, those titles, I won't diminish that. But what we have a tendency to do is get fixated on it. And so we lose sight of who we are. So I do know that God that the enemy hates the fact that God chose me to be woman in this time, in this dispensation of time on the earth. I'm so glad I wasn't born in the early 1900s where a lot of things was going on. But in 1963, he said, I need woman to grow and develop, go through her pains, go through her process, go through persecutions, go through so many problems. So the dunamis power that's on the inside of her can be proven. Do you all know you got to be proven for the kingdom? You got to be proven for the kingdom. So one of the things that the enemy loves to do particularly when you are the woman, and I say the because I always understand, according to Genesis 3, 14 and 15, that the hostility was placed between the serpent and the woman. That means nobody can do what you can do. Every woman has to take her occupancy in the earth as being the woman. I'm not just a, a woman of a general population. I have been assigned. I have been positioned. The enemy hates me because of that. He hates me because I know how to map my position. I know how to walk in my position. I know how to walk in my assignment. I know my mission for being woman. And I know that the dunamis power lives on the inside of me www.dunamis-woman.com and you will find our mission here at Dunamis Woman is to guide women of faith primarily that they may heal in the depths of their soul 
that they may transform their mind, their life, as well as their relationships, that they may understand and know how to pray and go into a place called spiritual warfare. Now, that is not all what I'm going to talk about today, but I just wanted to make mention of our mission because at the end of the day, I have to have healing in my life. I have to. The Word of God talks about healing. The kingdom was preached that all kind of diseases was healed. I'm not going to take you there to that scripture, but it, 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 it's, it's in the gospel. And so I, I want to make mention of that because he, they didn't preach a sermon. You know, Jesus didn't walk around preaching just a something. He preached the kingdom. And because the kingdom was preached, healing took place. All manner of diseases, whether it's physical disease, whether it's mental disease, whether it's emotional disease, whatever disease may be perplexing you, dis-ease, that now we got to understand healing is the children's bread. So now for what I'm going to talk about today is because my mind has to be renewed and I have to understand what, where is this area in my soul that it really needs to be focused on right now for healing to take place. So we're going to talk about the renewing of our mind where we have been hit, particularly as a woman. And I'm talking to women right now uh, because I am a woman. But if you're a man, I'm speaking to you and I want you to think as a man. But I can only think as a woman. OK, uh, I know, you know, that book, you know, act like a woman, think like a man. And I ain't getting all that worldly stuff. But what I am saying is that my mind is being renewed so I can be able to think as the woman God made me to be. And because the enemy know more about me than I knew about myself originally, he hit me in some areas of my soul that healing need to take place. So I want my mind to be renewed from the spirit of belittlement. That's the title. I said all that just to give you the title. Renewing my mind from the spirit of belittlement. Now, I don't know if you're watching this and you've been a part of Dunamis Woman. We have various areas of Dunamis Woman that you can come, come close and draw close uh, to constantly get built up for the kingdom and get healing. But uh, for those of you all who may and may not have a copy of my book, Conquering the Battleground Within Your Own Mind, I can't renew your mind for you. You have to do the work. You can't renew my mind for me. I have to do the work. And I also have to understand how the word applies from a kingdom perspective. Okay. So if you haven't gotten the book, I want to admonish you, get the book, Conquering the Battleground of the Mind, because what is in that book is helping you to understand from and through the word of God that there's various aspects of your mind that has been broken down from the Greek meaning of what that is. What does that look like? As opposed to me just saying, oh, let my mind be renewed and I don't know what the meaning of that mind means. I don't know how to renew it in that aspect of my mind. And that's what the book will, will, will help enlighten you. So if you haven't gotten the book, go get the book, www.doingamistashwoman.com and I promise you it will bless your life. So as of a woman, the enemy came after me with a spirit of belittlement. Spirit of belittlement. He came after you with a spirit of belittlement. If you're a man, you're not exempt. He came after you with a spirit of belittlement. And that's why healing is so important because people who ain't healed, they will allow the enemy to use them and they don't even know it and they don't even recognize it. But the spirit of belittlement wanted me to think less of who I am. The spirit of belittlement wanted to, me to think contrary of who I am. So if I think less of who I am and I think contrary of who I am, then that means he can continue to maximize opportunities by using my vessel. And so belittlement wants you to step back. Belittlement wants you to draw back. Belittlement wants you to shrink. Belittlement wants you to shut your mouth when you know you got a gift inside of you. Belittlement wants you to have lack of confidence when you know that there's more that God has for you. Belittlement wants you to say, oh, I know that there's more but I don't know how to reach it and every time I try to go after it somebody come after me another spirit of belittlement and another spirit of belittlement because when I break free I will begin to soar for the kingdom not just because I got a soar but the kingdom needs me to soar so the renewing of my mind I'm gonna give us one thing today uh, because I love the story or how Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman in John 4 all right and so I believe in the revelation of God's word. I believe that uh, the word of God is written, but there's more in-depthness to it, that we have to have an ear to hear. And also we got to study the show ourselves approve and have some also more research of what he's saying. And I'm going to give you a little backdrop on that. But in the meantime, I want to give you three questions. 
And they're just thought-provoking questions. Uh, I'm not asking you to answer it right now, but I want you to think. Because your mind can't be renewed if you don't think about some questions that you typically don't think about uh, because you're so busy with life. So if the first question is, why does your enemy want your mind? Why does your enemy want your mind? I did not ask the question, why does the enemy want your mind? Why does your enemy? Who is your enemy? I know you don't see him walking around, but spiritually, who is your enemy? Who is your enemy? That's a, that's, that's, that's a part of your seek, okay? Because the spirit of belittlement is all of our enemies, but it comes in a certain way based upon who you are as the woman and how God made you and what he's taking you to and what you have to do for the kingdom, all right? Question number two goes back to who is your enemy? Who is your enemy? Who is your enemy? Just don't say, ooh, the devil. Well, we understand that, Satan. But it's a little bit more definitive about who you are. Not focusing on who your enemy is, but I want you to focus on who you are, who God really made you to be so he can reveal who your enemy is. Who are you? Really? Really? We become so much for other people. We become so much to other people. We become so much when we got in this world and our mothers birthed us, we were started the becoming process of pleasing people, of being who they wanted us to be. And we think that that's who we are. That's not who we are. And so now the enemy mops us up because at the end of the day, if I don't know who I am, I don't know who my enemy is. Who are you? Point blank. Who the hell are you? Really? Who are you? And then that leads me to my third question for you. How do I discover who my enemy is? How do I discover it? How do I discover it? How do I discover that? Do I just read the Bible? Do I talk about it? Do I go to therapy? Do I go to counsel? Not to dismiss those, but for you, how do you discover it? Well, I can tell you for me, I discover it by understanding who I am and understanding my purpose and allowing my purpose to lead me, particularly as a kingdom visionary leader and a kingdom teaching pastor. I understand who my enemy is and I understand how he comes and I understand that he hates me. I understand the enemy wants me to shut my mouth. I understand the enemy don't want me to be my authentic self. I understand my, the enemy wants me to dummy down and continue to be what people want me to be. And I understand that. And because I understand that, I'm going to be free. I'm going to be free. And being free means I am going to disturb some people. Being free means I am going to anger some people. Being free, I am going to displease some people. Being free, I am going to piss some people off. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to draw back. Why? Because my mind got to be renewed from the spirit of belittlement. And the enemy hates me because of that. So he want to come and bring me little bitty attacks. And I got to stay fortified. All right. So the one way that you discover and the one way that I have discovered it is through my worship. OK, it's through my worship. I didn't say my singing. I didn't see me. I didn't say me going to church and just being a part of a worship service. I mean, really, literally, as uh, even Marvin Sapp sang on his uh, one of his uh CDs, find your place of worship. I can't find my place if I don't know who I am. Finding my place. Finding Devetta's place. Where is Devetta? Who is Devetta? Who is she according to God's mind? Not according to my mother's mind. Not according to the teacher's mind. Not according to the pastor's mind. Not according to my husband's mind. Not according to my children's mind. You see how we become something that everybody wants us to be? Who am I according to God's mind? That's how my mind got to be renewed. You could tell me to renew it all day long, but until I really understand who I am, what's on the inside of me that I have to not only produce for God, but by his miraculous power, allow it to manifest, which is according to his word. So my worship. My worship is for real. My worship. That's why I love the song. And, and go to YouTube and look at it by Bishop Larry Trotter. He said, you don't know my worship. And you don't know my pain. My worship is for real. I don't hide from pain. I embrace pain. I know what to do with pain because pain is my power. But the enemy want to inflict me with so much pain that I have to continue to live in a state of belittlement. And I'm coming to let you know today, according to this kingdom teaching, that the devil is a liar. You shall be free. 
by the renewing of your mind because dunamis lives on the inside of you. And you've got something to produce, not just for yourself, but for your legacy, for who God has assigned to you, whether it be your husband, whether it be your children. You can't do it for them, but you can do what you got to do for you because of who you really are. And my mantra is no soul will be left behind. I'm a soul winner and I know the ones that are attached to me, they shall be one for the kingdom of God. So put in there, you're a soul winner. You're a soul winner. You're a soul winner. Um, I want you to write this down. Okay? Because these are some nuggets before I go and read one of the chapter, one of the scriptures that is so familiar with, if I get to it. I mean, you may have to come and join me next week so we can continue on with this, but I don't believe and just going to scriptures and going to scriptures and going to scriptures and going to scriptures and don't challenge your thinking because it's all about your mind. And if the enemy got your mind, he got you. And oftentimes we take a jacked up mind and we take a belittled mind and we take a messed up mind and we take a mind that's been damaged and a mind that's been abused and a mind that's been inflicted. And we want to read the word to make us feel good and to medicate and it's not working. There's some miracles in the inside of you and it's about to come out. It got to manifest. This is the hour and the season. Okay. So write this down. Okay. You got to know this is about your enemy. I asked you all three thought provoking questions. So I want to give you some insight. All right. No, to know who you are, to know your enemy is to discover who you really are in Christ. Write that down. And I think I made mention to it, but I just want you to really capture that on your paper. To know your enemy is to discover who you really are in Christ. Underline really. Really. Who are you really in Christ? I ain't say in your money. I didn't say in your bank account. I didn't say in your degree. I didn't say in your ordination papers. I didn't say in your calling. I said in Christ, in the anointed one, in the Messiah. Whoa, who are you really? What's going to show up in you really? How is he really going to show up in you? Because I don't think he's belittled. I don't think he's docile. I don't think he is just uh, uh, just some anybody who will take a seat and let anybody just have their way in their life. I believe that he is a radical Christ and the, and the as the anointed one. He wouldn't have rose from the dead if he didn't. Who are you really in Christ? Number two. To know who you really are, you must know how to really worship. I didn't say sing. You got to know how to worship. What vein do I go in? How do I take this pain and find my place in worship? How do I take this pain and not just keep going through the formalities, not just keep doing what people want me to do? This is why John 4, I love it when he sat there in the 12 o'clock hour, the time that was unorthodox, that people don't really come to the well. And he knew that that woman was going to come to the well at 12 o'clock. Why? Because she had a scarlet letter on her forehead. She had guilt. She had shame. And so she didn't want to be amongst everybody. So she came at a time when nobody was going to be coming to look at her. But Jesus was right there. And he knew her pain. He knew how to cause her to think about where she was. And you all know the story. I believe you all are Bible scholars. You have read and you have listened so much to the message that was preached for it. But he asked her, who is your husband? And she said, that's not my husband. The one I'm sleeping with is not my husband. The other five ain't been my husband. And he was like, you told the truth. I know that. I'm just paraphrasing. I know that. So she had to tell the truth to find her place of worship. She had to tell the truth. My question is to you, what lies are you telling to yourself? Just because you married don't mean he's a husband. Just because you sleep with him don't mean he's a husband. Just because you live in the same house don't mean he's your husband. Or you may have had two, you may have had three, you may have had four. I know I have, but how do I know my place of worship based upon the pain that I have experienced? Because whoever he was, did not know how to love me as Christ loved me. Because the power of God is real and manifest. 
So the spirit of belittlement want me to think less than. The spirit of belittlement thinks that I have to just bow down to anything, anybody, because a ring on my finger. Oh, I'm just keeping it real. The spirit of belittlement and the kingdom is saying, Devout, I want you to renew your mind. Oh, you're going to still walk in love. You're going to still be kind. Love is long suffering, 1 Corinthians 13. Love doesn't easily provoke you to anger, but I want you to understand who you really are because you don't respond like every other woman. You will stand in the midst of it. Nobody will never know. But your place of worship is because your pain is your power now. Your pain ain't for your belittlement to go sit yourself down. Your pain is your power and it leads you to that place of worship. So I go back to know who you really are is to know your place of worship because that's where he wants to reveal you to you. Who are you really? And then the last part that I got for today and I'm going to come back to you because we're going to go and read John 4. And I'm going to go to the 21st verse. I actually gave you a little paraphrase of prior to scriptures. But I want you to write this down. It is the Father. That's with a capital F. It is the Father. It is only the Father. Only the Father who knows your enemy. Father. Father, your heavenly father. And if your earthly father knew his enemy, he would have told you his enemy. But it's your father. So even though your natural father, your biological father, your earthly father might not know, he might not be around, he may be deceased, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I know that our heavenly father still lives. And that's why my worship is for real, because I got to, re I want the Holy Spirit to reveal. I want the father to reveal. I want the father. This is why even in John 4, and you know the scripture, the father is seeking for worshipers. He didn't say God. He said the father, Jesus made mention that his father was seeking for worshipers, women who can worship by telling the truth, women who can take their pain and turn into their power, women who understands that I've been with him, I've slept with him, I've married him, I've been everything to him. But at the end of the day, he was not who I needed because he didn't know how to be the band around my heart nor my house. So I'm just going through a formality. And do you all know? That Samaritan woman, she had children. She had sons. Matter of fact, her worship led her on an apostolic movement. And I'm not going to get into that today. And as a result of that, her legacy, her sons, was converted. Why? Simply because she told the truth and she found her place of worship. So I'm going to come back because I, I just want to lay a foundation I, for these kingdom teachings, I don't want to be before you just throwing some scriptures around, throwing some stuff around, throwing some sayings around, and you just end up the same. We have all been belittled. The enemy has belittled me. He has belittled you. He has made you shut your mouth. He has made you sit down. He's made you think less of yourself. When you thought you was getting two steps a one step forward, he knocked you back two steps. Right when you think you got a breakthrough, he come back with some more mess. And that's the spirit of belittlement. But we're going to renew our minds. We're going to renew our minds because we're going to understand how do I work this word from a kingdom perspective that my life, my mind may be renewed and my legacy shall live. I'm a, I'm a living witness as a result of my healing, as a result of me understanding who I am as a kingdom woman in the kingdom, not only am I living, but my legacy lives. I fight my enemy knowing who he is because I know if he gets me, he gets my children and my children's children and my children's children. And though he may tarry and I might not be on this earth, as a result of me being a dunamis woman and understanding who I am, my legacy shall live. Well, I thank you all for joining me on today, all right? Uh, and just that little bit, okay? It was a foundation, you all. It was a foundation. But I pray that it gave you a little hunger and thirst for more. So even next week, you say, I want part two. I want part two. I want more. I want more. Because it's not about just throwing the word around. It's not about that. It's about coming into your life coming into your psyche, coming into your heart, coming into your mind and soul, which God gave you. And laying a foundation that the kingdom may be established in your life and in your relationships. Well, I'm Pastor D, and I look forward to being with you all once again. 
And if you haven't been a part of Dunamis Women Community, we have over 95,000 women right there in our community, all right, on Facebook. So go join us, Dunamis Women Community, all right? And we got so much more and so much more and so much more. But that's where I want you to start. Join us, all right? There's so much that God is doing for his glory and for the kingdom of God. God bless you.